Welcome to another episode of Scrap Rabbit Gaming with me, Scrap Rabbit. Last episode, we stuffed the bombs. You emerge from the foulness of the sewers, only to be met with the equally de dark stench of cordite and death. Although you've saved the Crees, it is far from unharmed. Residents wander the streets dazed, holding their wounds, tending to others, observing the damage. The look in their eyes tells the story. Their illusion of safety has been shattered. You enter Paul Amazel's trade emporium, already knowing what you'll find there. The knowledge doesn't make the discovery any easier. Uh... Once again, the team gathers around Paul Amsel. But tonight, he has no more missions to offer, and no advice to give. His body lies motionless in the hardwood, cooling in the night air. The ruin of his face has been hidden under the burlap tarp. For several minutes, nobody speaks. Finally, Dietrich steps forward. I think we should say something about Paul. There's another moment of silence. The Niker speaks up. I'll go. Niger brings herself to attention and stares straight ahead. Paul Amsel was an important member of this team, and he supported us well. He said what he was going to do, and he did it. That's rare. That's worthy of respect. She looks down at the body. It's a long pause before she speaks again. Thank you, Paul Amsel, for everything. Another pause. Her voice softens. I was out of position when they came for you. I couldn't save you. I'm sorry. The other shift uncomfortably, not knowing what to say. Glory breaks awkward moment, her voice a frosty monotone. I appreciate what Angel did for us. It's another loss, one that the team can't afford. Glory's eyes sweep across the group, then land on Angel's body. Her expression is impossible to read. After a moment, she turns her head to look at you. hard, I know, but this is why we need to keep together, support each other. No one's gonna look out for us, but us. Trick eyes you appreciably. Yeah, that's right. There's more to this than a mercenary's paycheck. There has to be. Goodbye, Paul. Good see you, dear. Gingerly, Blitz steps forward. His hair is mussed, and there's a fresh bullet hole in his jacket. He smells like smoke and blood and stale sweat. His hands tremble as he takes them out of his pockets. Well, uh, I didn't know Paul as well as the rest of you, but he seemed like a good guy. He shovels his feet. I don't want to see. I didn't want to see this happen at any rate. You okay, Blitz? Looks like you and Mallet saw some action back there. Yeah, he eyes the re his remain. His eyes remain fixed on Angel's body. I'll live. As if in turn, Dante lowers his head sadly, lets out a heavy sigh, and closes his eyes. We're missing Paul. Don't worry about the body. I know what to do. Be respectful, but be quick. After all, it is only a shell. Paul is with Monica now. We're all going to be with Monica soon if we don't do something. The Firewind came after us once. She'll do it again. The whole damn F state. She's being a little bit dramatic? I don't think that she is, Aga love. I really don't. Come on, everyone. Let's get a look at the optical chip. I want to see what we're dealing with. Well. That was a struggle. He looks up at you mournfully. Feral aggression has gone from his eyes. He's changed, you can see it. But he's still Dante. So scrap rabbit. Dante was very helpful out there, but I'm concerned about his... Fire breathing? Pretty cool trick, don't you think? It's handy, that's hard to argue. It's not a normal dog, not by a long shot. Is he possessed? Assume you've checked his aura and discovered he's part hellhound? Monica trained him for months to be combat ready. We had a hellhound in the house, and Monica didn't tell us for months? Scrap Rabbit has him under control. Dante performed well in the field, fault commands flawlessly. I have no concerns. Welcome to the team, Dante. Well. Oh. 
just for shits and giggles. Let's check to see... Not, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but... Whatever. Uh, the Condens Valis' optical chip. You stick the optical chip into the computer's waiting chip jack. On the screen, Alice's office blossoms into view. A half second later, a real-time simulation of Alice appears, seated behind her monogamy desk. Something about it reminds you of a figure from a wax museum, lifelike but dead inside. It greets you with a facsimile that Alice's joyless smile. Guess her name? Scrap Rabbit. Its voice is hollow, synthetic, an automaton masquerading as a living woman, one who you've never even met in the flesh. Account number 1012579. Greetings, valued customer. I am an offline smackum of the Alice Persona. I have been included on your chip to answer any questions you might have about your information purchase. Nifty piece of tech. Not now, Blitz. If you are ready to proceed, I will present Alice's findings. You may interpret this presentation. You may interrupt this presentation. Da da da. Alice have a question. Shown a road. Very well. Commencing presentation. This microphone goes rigid for a moment, then seems to relax, and when it speaks, it's more natural, as though the real ass is speaking through it. Alright, Scrap Rabbit, I've got good news for you, and I've got bad. Let's start with the good news. I found Beauclair, and he is alive. Thank God. The trail to your missing doctor is a very is it was a long and slippery one. The fee that you paid me barely covered my costs for the job. I sent a team into the socks on a fact-finding mission. I bribed government officials. I greased the palms of wage slaves at megacorps all across Europe. Each step I took eliminated possibilities, drew me a little bit closer, and finally I found the place where Vauclair is being held. Sweeping gesture with his right hand, an image switchblades, a tool on the screen, a grainy overhead photograph, noted with a map coordinates. He recognized it immediately. This is where you'll find him. He is being held captive at a remote estate called Harfield Manor. You've got to be kidding me. You said the whole time? Where says nothing? She just studies the photograph and nods. Okay, nobody tell me. I get it. This is something else that I missed. Else, I have a question. Uh, Alright, please make your inquiry now. What else did you turn up about the manor? Seismological data and the imaging confirm the existence of a large hollow chamber under the estate. It's my suspicion that Dr. Vauclair is being held somewhere within the substructure. The issue has kept Vauclair trapped there for almost 20 years. She's got to have a reason for it. It takes effort and resources to lock a man away for that amount of time. So what's her endgame in all this? Why not just kill him and be done with it? She's going to use his body to come back. Oh my god. Malice? Revenge? Who knows? Remember, this was the man who shot her down. He sent her crashing into a radioactive wasteland. If somebody did that to me, I'd want to hurt him too. And I'd make it last. Think goes deeper than that. According to Winter's DVD, Vauclair designed the experimental weapon shot her down, and that weapon split her body from her essence down her own steel and chrome arms and suppresses a shudder. If I had to guess, I'd say that she's trying to make him fix whatever he did to her. That's what myth, that's what makes sense to me. There's a moment of silence as the group processes Glory's suggestion before anyone can speak. It's back in. Do you have another question? Any evidence? My asset of uh, Neuronet provided me with a video feed dated that the feed was taken of corporate surveillance drone minutes of playback. The screen is filled with a grainy black and white video feed. You recognize the Harfield Manor. Photographed from high above, the camera pushes in and the image sharpens through a bared, barred ground level window. You can see the shape of a stooped, emaciated figure. His body shows clear signs of neglect. The figure is unmistakable. It's Vauclair, 20 years older for, and worse for wear. His skin ha hangs loose on his bones, and his cheeks are hollow. There's a distinctly gray pallor to his skin. It's Vauclair, all right. It's left of him, anyway. It doesn't look like they've been feeding him much. Poor bastard. Another figure steps into frame behind Vauclair. An orc, he turns to slightly, and the skin grafts catch the light. Yep. Do you have another question? Let's get on to the bad news. Very well. Feel free to interrupt again with any future inquiries. 
The tremor washes over its body, its eyes flutter, and you hear the sound of your computer working to process more of the chip's data. It turns to address the team. Beauclair's at Harfow, who we got problems. Last time we broke into that place, they took Monica out. It was a miracle that any of you got out alive. Yeah, but now we know what's down there. This time, we'll, we'll be prepared for it. We can handle this. No, it'll be even worse this time. The first time we went in, we had the element of surprise on our side, but now they'll be expecting us. They're hunting us, remember? The security team is going to be waiting for us, Dietrich. That Audrion bastard is going to be waiting for us, and even if we make it past them, we're going to have to deal with the dragon in the basement. Well, what else can we do? Cut and run? Last time I checked, that wasn't an option either. Even if it were, I wouldn't take it. I'm not running from this. Not after what they did tonight. Uh, can't just go charging in there again, not without some kind of edge. Uh, da da da. And now, Scrap Rabbit, onto the bad news. You now know that Vauclair is. Uh, you, know, you now know where Vauclair is, but rescuing him will not be possible. So, I have a question. Why the hell not? In the course of my investigations, I encountered some, something terrifying in the Matrix. It was fast, cunning, and very definitely intelligent. I'm convinced I only escaped because it let me go. It could have killed me in a heartbeat if it wanted to. This thing that I met is protecting the Hartfield Manor. It's going after anyone who gets too close to what's happening there. Ellis, what did you see in there? What is going after these people? By way of explanation, I would like you to read the following documentation. Uh, many slide back to the screen, this time it's filled with tasks. What you're looking at is an archived forum discussion from the early days of the Shadowland BBS. So there's uh, the text on the screen. She, uh, it isn't kidding, Chief. This discussion is dated back to 2036. Six, that's ancient history in the Decking community. Probably isn't even correct to call these guys Deckers. Hackers would be a more appropriate term. You finish reading over it. Say, Alice, I'm done, and we can continue. Read the archive discussion. So you read the text, leave against the scroll up from the bottom of the screen. You'll hear about the SK team that got crisps a few hours ago. A whole lab's worth of researchers, all burned and broken beyond recognition. Ugly stuff, clockwork. At this point, who hasn't? Big Pharma. Power spike, got them right through their data checks, like a bolt, bolt of lightning to the brain. A one in a million accident is what they're saying, Mr. Mayhem. And you believe that, clockwork? Got a more plausible explanation? Yes, actually, it was a cleanup operation. Color me intrigued. Intrigued. What are they cleaning up? A secret project that Low 4 didn't want anything to do with. Won't do with. Uh, you might have heard rumors about it. The project name was Apex. And you've lost me. Apex, clockwork, seriously. That old line of direct. I'm telling you, Jokers, Apex is real. Or at least it was. Until the Whizworm pulled the plug. Come on, clockwork. We're still decades away from seeing a fully functional AI. You know that. Those Apex stories that they've been flo floating around, just some conspiracy nuts wet dream. Fine, keep your heads in the sand. Some of us know the truth when we read it. Okay, Clock, I'll humor you, but riddle me this. If Lofor had a, an armed and Operation AI in his claws, why kill it? You remember what happened to most of Echo Mirage? Crash virus killed them. Fried their brains, but I don't see what that has to do with anything. With the commercial release of the CDT-1000, some security firms are working on counter-intrusion software that could do the same thing. Black Ice. You can look it up if you don't believe me. Whoa, scary stuff, man. Well, the goal of Apex Project was even scarier. I see waits for you to come to it. Apex wouldn't be bound by those restrictions. It could go out hunting, hit its targets where they least expect it. That's why they call it Apex. It was, it was designed to be an Apex Predator of the digital world. And so, rather than using it to his advantage, Lofort decided to kill it in the cradle. The Whizworm's no fool. Some things are too dangerous to play around with. How would you put that genie back in the bottle if it ever slipped out of your control? Answer, you couldn't. And then it would take over the world! Okay, this thread has officially gone off the rails. I'm closing it down for the good of mankind. So done. Da, da, da. There's no official records in the Seder Krug database to support the existence of, of the Apex project. But the thing I encountered was Apex. Of that, I'm certain. Just as I'm certain that Apex was responsible for the deaths of Monica Schaefer, Green Winters, Clockwork, uh, Peregrine, and a score of other Deckers over the last 16 years. 
Hold up, Alice. I have a question. I thought they said that Lofor killed Apex. They speculated as much. Yes, they were wrong on that count. I do believe that Seder Krupp was developing Apex as a tool for Matrix Warfare. I'm also convinced that the IT personnel who were killed were the Apex development team, but I don't think Lofor was responsible for their deaths. Apex killed them. That'd be my guess, yes. In the turmoil surrounding Lofor's buyout of Seder Krupp, a number of projects went missing. I believe that Apex was appropriated by a member of Fuchswinger's organization at this point. It was then unleashed on its own development team to silence them. Since then, it has provided information control for Firewing. A pet AI would explain how Fuchswinger has managed to maintain her, consp her conspiracy and avoid detection for the past two decades. By the time anyone gets close, the AI takes them out and scrubs the record clean. So, there's the bad news, Scrap Rabbit, who Claire is being held in Harfan Manor, but knowing that does you no good because you can't appreciate you can't approach the place. Doubt that you could open the door without Apex frying you. We did last time. They were trying to protect their secret. Like Aldrin said, if we hadn't gone down into the basement, they'd have let us go. Apex didn't react to us until Monica attempted to force the door open to the basement, and now that the cat's out of the bag, they have no reason not to pull out the big guns on sight. You're right, we can't go back while Apex is in place. It's a place, Scrap Rabbit. We can't turn back now. If Apex is standing between us and Vauclair, then we need to find a way to kill Apex. Fucking A, boss. I'm in. Did you hear that, Alice? Do you have any suggestions? Uh, the AI has a kill switch, but Alice deemed an additional contact with Apex would be an unjustifiable risk. Attempting to reach the kill switch would be inadvisable. I'll be the judge of that. Now let's tell us about Apex's kill switch. Thanks to my close encounter with the AI, I was able to run a trace on it. Through this trace, I discovered the physical address of a backdoor access point to Apex's programming, an old Seder Group research lab, long since abandoned following dis disrepair. The facility is now hotly contested gang territory. I have also determined that a kill switch for an AI exists somewhere in the basement of this facility will provide you with a physical address. I don't like the smell of this, Chief. It's said that Apex let Alice escape. Alice, why would a Matrix Warfare AI allow you to run a trace on it? I'm afraid that the answer to that question falls outside the scope of my written parameters. You have now reached the end of this presentation. I have been coded with a final message from Alice to Scrap Rabbit. Playback commencing. Ah, uh, floods. Scrap Rabbit, if you didn't listen to me before, listen to me now. Drop this. Stop going after Vauclair. Get out of Berlin and stay out of the Matrix. I'm telling you, this is for your own good. That's all I have to say. I'm following my own advice. I'm out. Don't try to contact me again. Whew. Okay. So the dragon has a killer AI in charge of security. I can't say I'm surprised, but then nothing surprised me anymore. We know what killed Monica. We have a name for it. And we know how to kill it. It's good enough for me. We know what we have to do. We can either stand around talking about it, or we can go for it. Agreed. Sounds like a plan. Still say that this is crazy talk, Chief. Taking on an AI isn't just a bad idea, it's suicide. So my vote is to cut and run. To raise the rest of the group, sees the determination of finally size. But if you're really going to do this, you want the best decker you can find along the ride. And I guess that nominates me. Woo. You're not the best, but you'll do. Because you're free. Alice said that the kill switch is located in some old SK facility, assuming that the site shut down some time after the Apex project disappeared. Could have stood empty for years, maybe decades. She also said that the building was in gang territory now. I wonder if it would be anything like Dust Kessel House was. God, I hope not. There's only one way to find out. Let's get prepped. That thing isn't going to kill itself. Let's set you. Worries pain all over his face. I can't believe I'm saying this, but you'd better bring me along. If you're going up against an AI without a Nova Hot Decker at your side, you're probably going to regret it. Begins her weapons check. Improvise, adapt, overcome. Whatever's there, we'll deal with it. First, we find a way into the basement. And then we kill the AI that killed Monica. Damn right. You did good out there, defending the Kruitz Bazaar. 
You've had our backs the entire way. Made good decisions. In this job we work together or die alone? True. You're right. Again. Ah, stop beating yourself up! Okay, um... Well, this was another exposition episode. I'm gonna cut it here. It's a little short, but I figure whatever we're getting into is gonna take a bit. So, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful evening.